Good morning. <clears throat> Okay, okay. Yes, uh, you have the control for keeping an eye on the number of participants. Okay. okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today, I wanted to focus uh, a little bit on um, uh, on a few advanced features uh, within Think or Swim. Okay, so Okay, uh, good morning everyone again. Uh, just a quick recap. Uh, this is the left pane. In this left pane, uh, you can uh, customize this. If you have a lot of gadgets you uh, did not set, you can click on this gear icon and X them out. Uh, if you want to add gadgets, you push the plus button and uh, it gives you all different types of gadgets that it it can support, um, uh, and as we have talked about this before, uh, watch list is probably one of the most uh, commonly used um, uh, gadgets. Uh, you know, I like to put Dow Jones index here to keep an eye on a, on a full list of index, uh, but you can, you can have different other items. Uh, I'm going to put, uh, uh, not this one, I'm going to X that out, live news. And I would put in one other uh, watch list consisting of the items that I'm looking at or, or we can also have top uh, gains or, uh, or losses in, uh, uh, in different categories. Uh, and you can browse through that. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, you know, there are these uh, seven uh, uh, tabs. Uh, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, there are nine tabs, but this education and health tab, um, those are just uh, uh, support tabs. So these seven tabs are the most important ones. And out of them, uh, the most important one is the charts. 
then you also need to toggle uh, in between uh, charts and monitor. Uh, today, I, I will be talking about the trade um, uh, tab. So as you know, we have already talked about this chart. Um, you know, this is a candle chart. So all these things that you see, these are called candles. Uh, you can switch between candle or uh, style, go under style and chart type. So right now it's candle chart that's uh, uh, selected, but you can change it to, for example, bar chart. So this is bar chart. Uh, if you wanted to use another style, um, you can you can you can go back and forth with this line chart, area chart. Uh, so, but candle chart is uh, most commonly used uh, chart. Of course, you can uh, you can click on this uh, gear sign up here, and and also uh, make your appearance. You know, if you want to change these colors. Uh, you have the option to do that here as well. <clears throat> um, another important thing is the time frame. Uh, you, you know, you have uh, certain time frames already given to you. Uh, you know, for example, one day, one minute chart, five day, five minute chart, five day, fifteen minute chart, ten day. So these are already there, but you can also change it as, uh, you know. Uh, you can you can customize this day. So for example, I added this 20 year one day chart, but if you wanted to add a different, um, uh, you know, uh, option. So for example, let's say five year, um, five year two day chart, you know, that would be another option that you can uh, use going forward. So I apply, hit OK, and then, then you can click on D and you see this five year two day chart uh, for any company basically. This is where the company name comes in, uh, you know, the ticker comes in and the name shows up here. Um, it talks about, uh, shows you which chart you're looking at. You're looking at five year two day chart and this company is listed at New York Stock Exchange um, and as we move here, this bar is also important, shows you date. Uh, and at that particular instant, you know, where your mouse is, you know, uh, cursor is, uh, it shows you the opening price and right corresponding to is the close price during that time frame, and then high and low price uh, at that instant where your cursor is. <clears throat> these charts, the purpose of these charts is so that you can see um, their history. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so it gives you a very, a quick overview of what has happened with this company in the past. What are the trends? Um, you know, so for example, if I do an even longer term um, chart, it gives me even uh, larger history. At the bottom, wherever you see this dollar sign, that shows that a dividend was given. So some of these stocks pay out dividends. Uh, not all companies pay dividends. Um, so, you know, larger companies, well-known companies with a larger market cap, uh, you know, you can expect that they would have regular uh, dividends being paid out. And uh, amount of dividend is also dependent on uh, on the stock price. So companies with a with a higher stock price, for example, Apple or uh, you know, let's let's look at Apple's. Um, uh, okay. So if you if you mouse over this, it shows you they paid out fifty seven cents dividend. Right. Um, let's look at um, uh, Amazon. Uh, Amazon.com right here. If you look at their dividends, um, 
you see they paid six dollars in this time frame you know at this uh, where I'm where I have my cursor over uh, 4.87 4.43 4 so different companies pay different rates uh, but uh, again it depends on the price but look at the Amazon's uh, stock price one stock of Amazon is two thousand two hundred eighty three dollars uh, so that's quite a lot of money um, are they paying that much money per share or just six dollars per person per share so if you have 100 shares that means you have two hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars uh, tied up in Amazon and then you would also multiply that um, dividend you know whatever that dividend was for for example four dollars per share and you have hundred shares um, you know you you get four hundred dollars uh, uh, you know from that perspective are you taxed on dividends yes so that well it depends um, how you are taxed you are taxed but how you are taxed is also uh, dependent so if you're doing it with the with your um, uh, retirement accounts, then you are not taxed at the time you earn that money. You get taxed when you withdraw that money and you cannot withdraw that money without a penalty uh, until you are 61 and a half years old. So if you wait until that time, it'll, it'll become your ordinary income and you pay ordinary income tax. Uh, but if this is your investing account, uh, and you are uh, actively investing uh, in different stocks and you hold on to this stock for a period of, I think it's one year. If you hold it on, hold on to a stock for a period of one year, then you pay capitals, capital gains tax, which is 15%, which is, uh, you know, for all practical purposes, quite low uh, on, the, on the tax bracket. Uh, but if you do not, keep that, um, uh, if you don't hold on to that share for a year and you make money out of it, then it becomes your income and then you have to pay uh, regular income tax. So let's say if you made uh, $50,000 on this stock, that, you know, on, on all of the stocks that you did not hold for more than a year, uh, they will become part of your regular income. So for example, um, uh, for example, you you had uh, seventy thousand dollars on your on your W two, you know, from your regular employment, and then you had fifty thousand uh, dollars profit from the trades that you were making. So that fifty thousand and seventy thousand will become, uh, you know, they'll be joined together, and that's how the tax rate will be determined. So is that still based on whether or not you took the money out, or if if it's still sitting in your account? Yes, it could still be sitting in your account. So at the end of the year, you will receive um, some type of statement uh, from your, whoever uh, is your broker. So it could be Charles Schwab, it could be Fidelity, it could be anything. So if you're making money, uh, you know, you will be paying taxes. So, um, but I'll be happy to pay those taxes. You know, if I'm making $50,000 a year, I have no problem paying taxes on it. Got it. Right. So likewise, this will also, if you incurred a loss, you can also deduct this from your income. So, so let's say you had a $5,000 loss at the end of the year, just like you'll receive W-2 from your job, you would also receive a tax form uh, from your broker. And, uh, and if there's a loss, you can claim that loss to lower your income. Um, a lot of times these types of things happen. Uh, people, you know, depending on when the market crashed, um, people may have lost closer to the end of the year uh, and they did not make up that uh, loss. So for example, instead of March, if this crash had happened in December, previous year, it would have been a loss but the next year, uh, when the recovery takes place, <clears throat> you would have a lot of um, income uh, that you would have to pay taxes on. So, so you have to be mindful uh, of those things. 
uh, <clears throat> uh, this is one of the so capital gains. Of course, that is uh, um, also another option. 15% is quite low, as I told you. This was one of the reasons why, uh, you know, there was the famous situation when Mitt Romney was running that he pays, um, his secretary pays more taxes, uh, more percentage of tax than him because he was paying on capital gains, he was paying 15% and his employee was paying at, you know, 28% or 30%, or maybe even 35%, uh, depending on uh, how much, income, because all of her income was on W-2, so she, that was ordinary income, that was not capital gains for her, but for Mitt Romney, even though he was making millions of dollars, all of that was um, uh, capital gains. So he was paying lower percentage in terms of taxes. And that's what happens, you know, Warren Buffett, um, Jeff Bezos, you know, all these big names, uh, billions of dollars worth of empires, uh, more, in most cases, their incomes are, are capital gains. So they end up paying a smaller percentage of uh, taxes. Okay, any questions? So here? all these millionaires and billionaires, they're usually, they're, their main source of income is through trading? Stock? Yes, in most cases, yes. So, um, and they may not be managing these uh, portfolios themselves. They may have... Uh, uh, companies that and and uh, you know departments that may be taking care of just their wealth, uh, but that's that's a topic for another day. Let's focus on 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 this today. Uh, that uh, for you, charts is one of the more important things, and then of course monitor. We have already talked about it. Um, all your orders, you know, working orders, filled orders, cancel orders, you know, all these things come under here. And then of course there are sub tabs, uh, account statements, uh, Forex reports, Forex would be foreign exchange. Uh, if you are dealing in buying and selling uh, currency, foreign currency, uh, that would go in. And then there's a strategy drawer. We'll talk about that another time. Um, let me talk about uh, this tab uh, called trade. So trade would um, allow you, so if you look at this, you've got several uh, drop downs here, underlying trade grid, option uh, chain, today's option statistics, options, times, and, sa and sales, and product depth. So underlying is where you see the bid, bid and the ask price for this stock, okay? Now, anytime you see the small um, tooltip, when I'm at bid, it says sell. And when I go over here, it says buy. This is the same thing uh, if I was looking in the uh, left bar, wherever there's an ask price, you see a buy symbol and a sell symbol here. So what this does is if you click, if you double click on this, it will automatically create this order. So if you, it, it depends where you, where you double clicked, if you clicked on ask or bid. So let me quickly delete this. And again, so I'm going to buy, that's the asking price. I wanna buy, I just double click this and this order, this automatic order is created. It's a limit order. It sets the price to whatever the price was at that instant, but it makes it a limit order. I can change it to market order. There are other types of orders as well. We're not gonna talk about them right now. So right now we're talking about market and limit. Market would be that when the order goes in, uh, I may see 22.53, but by the time the order hits the stock market, there may be uh, a few nanoseconds of uh, delay in it. Uh, and the price has jumped to 56 or whatever uh, other amount. So that would be the price that this order will settle at. But if I make it a limit order, and I specified 22, 53 uh, and 50 cents, then it will settle at that particular price, even if it has to wait. Of course, I can change this. Uh, I can make it that when the price drops to $2,200, then buy me 100 stocks, okay? So buy 
100 stocks and of course this value can be changed um, so let's make it uh, 50 stocks of Amazon for $2,200 and um, okay and I look at it I double check it that I got it right 50 buying 50 stocks at a price of $2,200 a limit order it's for good for a day or you can have it good till cancel GTC so day and good till cancel these are two uh, of the more important things and then this talks about the exchange um, uh, this is where this stock Amazon is coming from and I hit confirm double check it one more time and you can see this all of this um, negative fifty three thousand seven hundred dollars so that's what it's going to cost me to buy 50 Amazon stocks at the price of $2,200. I hit send and the order go back to monitor uh, activity and positions and you can see that this is under working order. Come back to trade. So that's that's how the underlink. So this is regular uh, bid and ask price uh, that you can buy. So uh, people are bidding at 22. If I double click this, it'll create a sales order. Sell 100 stocks of Amazon. So I do not have Amazon stocks, so I'm not gonna use this. I'm gonna delete this order. Uh, but the point is you can, you can make these quick uh, purchase and buying um, uh, by just double clicking, uh, you know, buy and uh, uh, bid and ask prices. Now let me move over to a new concept. We have not talked about this concept before. You may have heard the word options, that people, um, uh, people also trade options. An option is an advance order or, or, um, or an order to buy an order in the future. So for example, if I'm expecting that the price for Amazon stock is gonna go up in the future. I wanna lock in on today's price. I'll have to pay a premium, but I can lock that price today. So let's say, here's, here's one option order. Um, no, look at this one. Okay. Okay. Okay, so look at this option. This option is good until June 19th that I can purchase Amazon at 22.45. Now, the current price is 22.83 for Amazon. You see that? Now I could lock in this price at 22.45 until June 20th. If the price goes up, let's say it goes up to $2,400. I already have purchased this option, so I pay some amount of money per share, and I can, uh, I can have that uh, locked in until June 19th. Now, let's say, around June 19 when I actually want to purchase it and the price is lower. Price for Amazon stock is lower than this option 
then I don't need to exercise this option. I can just go ahead and uh, purchase it from the open market. But if the, if the market price is higher, I can buy it at 2245 and sell it at the market rate. And that would, um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, that would be another way of making money. Or I can, I can even sell this option. So I buy an option and I can sell this option to somebody else who may be interested. So that also becomes, so this is a derivative uh, of stock trading, which makes things even more complicated. Uh, but in, in a number of situations, people do make money by trading options. They don't even touch the stock. They just uh, trade options. So this is how you're going to do it under options uh, sub tab or, or this drop down. Um, we do not have today's option statistics yet because the market is, has not yet opened. So, so when the market opens, uh, we'll see all of this. So there are, there are a few words that you should know about options. So just like for a regular trading, we talk about bid and ask. Remember those words, bid and ask? Similarly, for options, we have two words called call and put. Call option and put option. Uh, call option is when you want to purchase. So for example, you can also make a call that you want to buy uh, an option to purchase five Amazon stocks at a certain price. If somebody accepts it, then you know you have a trade. Uh, you can put an option like others had put that op those options. So for example, these are put options from others from others' perspectives. Uh, so you can see if there if there are people who are putting options that would also tell you what investors are expecting to happen with this stock. Okay, if there are a lot of put options, that means a lot of people are willing to sell the stock in future at today's price. If there are a lot of call options, it means that the demand is high for that price. So they are, that everybody is expecting the price to to go up. That's why they are calling uh, that they want to purchase it now, that option, not the stock, just the option. So you pay a fraction of the amount uh, per stock. Uh, so that is a premium. So, so that's how people who are selling the option to you, uh, they make their money uh, by that premium. Okay. Any questions? Um, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, the one question that I have is about the video. So this this pace is really really fast. And I'm a uh, I'm a kinesthetic learner, so I have to be able to do it, but I can't do it at your speed. Um, so I was wondering if you were able to send the video from yesterday's class. Did that download? Yes. It? Yes. So I changed the setting yesterday. I um, I had the video saved in the cloud within Zoom. So I'm going to figure it out how to download it and upload it to YouTube or somewhere else. Uh, so today's lecture, I believe, is being recorded. I thought it was being recorded. I'm going to see it now. Yeah. I think it's being. Oh, I see it. It's at the top left corner of the screen. Okay. Okay. So, so we should we should have that. So, however, I have a I have a better strategy. You know, of course, I'll I'll share the video with you. Uh, but uh, just in case, if uh, uh, even if you didn't have the video, let's do these things ourselves. Um, so, so you have, uh, you know. Uh, a workshop style experience of doing these things uh, yourself right now. Uh, so what time is it? It's uh, one minute before the market opens. So let's uh, quickly scan the market. Let's see what's going on in the market. Um, you remember this uh, uh, tab data after hours. So this is going to show us what happened last night. Uh, so all the indices were down last night. 
uh, quite a significant bunch, uh, as a matter of fact. Um, there's plenty of bad news. Uh, banks are preparing for a flood of bad loans. JP Morgan Chase has uh, set aside $6.8 billion to protect against the unexpected wave of loan defaults. Uh, these are international markets, all of them in the negative territories. I think there was another uh, bad news. Uh, last night, China uh, had cut rates on, on, and on this, another significant. Oh, look at this. Uh, crude oil, 1985. So I can't say that this is the lowest that I have ever seen. I think the lowest I have ever seen is $10, but that was 20 years ago. So, um, so this is quite significant, uh, you know, uh, what else? So let's look at, so this is a minute after the market has already opened. So let's look at what's happening right now. Um, okay, so this is still showing data from yesterday. Um, 5.16 p.m. yesterday. Okay, 9.30, 36 minutes. Now it's showing current data. Let's refresh this. Okay, so all of our indices, no. It's still showing yesterday's data. So let's give it a minute. Now this is not a good thing that if you do not have updated data coming in. This is still showing yesterday, but here it says updated 931. <clears throat> and how do you know it's not updated? Oh, no, the I'm time. Looking, at right here. looking at right here. So right now it shows April 15th, uh, 931 AM. So now we are getting new data. NASDAQ is still showing zero, zero, no change because they're still calculating now. So now we have it two minutes later uh, whatever has been traded in the last two minutes shows us the market is going in the negative territory uh, today. So, uh, no, but when you looked on here and it said 9:31, right? <coughs> um, you said okay, the data is for today, but it really wasn't. How did you know that? Because it was the same number from yesterday. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So. See, this is this is what I would like you to develop that capacity, uh, and this comes with uh, with a little bit of practice. You know, right now all these numbers um, may look very intimidating, but ultimately, uh, you know, you'll start to remember what these numbers mean. And uh, if you saw a piece of data from yesterday versus today, you'll you'll start to remember that this is you know you'll know right away that there's something wrong. Okay, so what should we do? Let's, uh, let's actually buy and sell a few things today. Um, uh, and you know, I also like to check things on, um, on Robinhood. I was actually, before the, we started this class, I was looking at Chesapeake Energy. So what happened was yesterday uh, in the aftermarket, Chesapeake Energy was among, among the top losers. Um, and it ended up on that list. Uh, not this, this one, the stock market watch. You see that? So it just so happens that I, I have dealt with Chesapeake Energy in the past. So it caught my eye. Uh, so I looked at all these other things. None of these, uh, you know, I have seen before in any level of uh, detail, uh, probably this one, uh, Tiziana, I think we looked at it last week when we were going through this, but this is 1400 stocks. So I'm not even gonna bother about that. I do not recognize any of these other names, but I did recognize Chesapeake Energy. So of course, Chesapeake Energy would make sense um, uh, that it dropped because yesterday, the oil prices dropped significantly. Uh, this is uh, an independent exploration and production company, which engages in acquisition um, 
exploration and development of properties for production of oil, natural gas, and natural gas liquids uh, from underground preserves located in Louisiana, Ohio, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Wyoming. Uh, the company has been there since 1989. Market cap is 36 billion. So this is not a small company. Uh, got 2,300 employees. So this is looking pretty good. Today's data shows me that it is still at 1870, 1869. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna, I wanna go ahead and buy 100 shares of this at the market price. I hit this buy and I get 100 stocks right off the bat. Okay, now this it, is- It says 69% it says yes. of people are selling it. When I look at the five year mark, it's still the same price as, it is, as it's been in five years, 1861. No, I'm bugging, okay, now I see what you mean. But it's still down. Okay, now is the time to buy when it's down. I guess the highest was 2015. No, actually, you are right. Let me look at the history of how I had purchased this. Oh, it's not showing me anything from beyond three months. Uh, no, this history, I'm looking on the same page you're looking, you're looking at, Robin Hood. And yeah. it's down right now. And 69% of people are selling. And the highest price in five years is sixteen fifty four. So it's even it's trading even higher today. That is, there is some bad data coming in. I want to be out. I don't want to stay in here. Thank you for pointing that out. There you go. Okay. So I may have lost a few cents, but I'm out. A few dollars, eighteen dollars actually. No, which is 67 and then 33. This looks odd. So, so another thing to remember that just because it ends up here in top losing stocks, that does not mean much either. So, um, so just because I was familiar with the name, I would have made a mistake here if I had stayed for too long. So you're right, you know, so this is, this is a penny stock. So what happened to it last night? I don't see any news. Let's go to Finviz. What is the ticker? CHK? CHK. Insider transactions are up. April 7th downgrade, Scotia Bank, April 15th. What does that mean, does that, mean that they, they downgraded it? Say that again? What does that mean downgrade? Oh, this is an analyst, uh, you know, from Scotia Bank, which says, you know, that they have downgraded its, uh, uh, so upgrade would be that go ahead, buy it. Downgrade would be that don't buy it, sell it. See, from hold to sell, but that was on March, March 9th. Uh, April 7th, it was further downgraded. Mm -hmm. That this is, sec so it, previously they had it listed under sector outperformer, but on the 7th, they changed that to sector underperformer. That's everybody else is doing better than, uh, than Chesapeake Energy. Mm -hmm. So Chesapeake Energy is not doing very well. And here it says, so yesterday was Chesapeake Energy holders approve one for 200 reverse stock split. Oh, oh, you see this? So this is what had happened that this penny stock ended up being $18. So they had, they combined 200 shares into one share. Wow. Right, so if you owned 200 stocks yesterday of Chesapeake Energy, today they are only 
equal to one star. Why would they do that? They are allowed to do it. So they vote on it. And um, uh, if, uh, if the holders approve it, you know, all the, all, everybody who has given a loan or everybody who owns a stock, they give the approval. So usually they would have a, um, uh, some type of voting on this. And that's legal? That's not like taking people's money? No, 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 no. They're not taking anybody's money. So the money remains, so your equity remains the same. It's just that, that now it is uh, worth one uh, stock. So for example, for example, right here, yesterday, these would have been, um, two th no, two, 20,000 stocks. So those 20,000 stocks would change to 100 stocks because they did it one to 200. But the amount of money will, would have remained the same. So no, there's no uh, change in the equity. The change is with the number of shares. So, so this can happen. Sometimes companies split their stock. So splitting a stock would mean, so for example, Amazon um, may declare that instead of, uh, you know, at, it's trading at 22, 80, you know, around the $2,300 mark per share, that they are splitting the stock in one to two. So then every stock of uh, Amazon would become half in price, but the number of stocks would increase. You understand that point? Yes, I do. It, it happened to um, my husband the other day. It was uh, Raytheon. Raytheon split. Um, he had two stocks and then it split and he had wound up having four and it, I think he originally bought it at a hundred and something dollars and then each stock was 50 something dollars. It's gone up to 60 something now, but yeah. I understand. Right, right. So, so these are quite common and, and you know, right here you saw a panic uh, uh, sell without looking at what happened, right? So I saw that this was penny stock. All of a sudden, how did it get to $18 uh, and I sold it. Uh, when as a matter of fact, I could have kept it. So if you further look at this, so this was from yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, Chesapeake shareholders approve controversial reverse stock split. Why is it controversial? Uh, yeah, so it, uh, you know, so that's what caused negative 18% of drop in the stock value. And then Chesapeake, today's uh, news at 8.45 a.m., uh, stock tumbles towards record lows, uh, even as large reverse split boots prices by 200 times. So you're saying it's a good buy, why? It would have been no, now I'm not sure because this is too complicated now. Oh, okay. Right? This, this, compli this stock split being controversial, um, you know, this, this makes it um too hot for my appetite you know and why do you say why did it, why do you think they say it's controversial just because it's too challenging for people to understand and wrap their heads around it not necessarily so let's look at the news in detail uh announced that shareholders have now approved a reverse split so so you know shareholders approve it and then and then the uh, holders, the, the lenders, they approve it. So, so shareholder would be the partners, business partners. Uh, when you own a share, you are a partner in that company and holders would be the, the lenders. So you need approval from both of those. And apparently they received approval from both of them yesterday. Okay. Uh, reverse split is intended to increase the per share trading price to satisfy $1 minimum bid price required by New York Stock Exchange. So if you, if you become a penny stock and you remain a penny stock for too long, New York uh, Stock Exchange may boot you uh, from their listing. So you may not be able to trade anymore. So that is one of the reasons that they had to do it. Um, as a result of the reverse 
stocks spread 200 shares of Chesapeake common stock will automatically combine into one share and the number of shares of common stock are certain will be accordingly reduced from 1.96 billion to 9.78 million. Uh, the split comes effective April 14th. So that changed the value of their company? Yes. Well, no, the value of the company remains the same. It's just that it was 1.96 billion shares outstanding at that penny price. Right now they have 9.78 million, but at a much higher price. So the, the, st the, uh, uh, the value of the company still remains the same, uh, you know, which is $36 billion. So $36 billion divided um, in, uh, in 1.96 billion shares versus 9.78 billion, a million, that still keeps the value, the market cap still remains the same. Okay, why is it controversial? Does not talk about it. So normally it would be considered uh, controversial because you know it's a bandit. It's it's you know it's not a real fix for the the problems, the fundamental problems that this company may be facing. Uh, that they are trying to change the optics. They you know, from 16 cents, they want to make it look like, you know, the price is artificially high um, at $18. Uh, but it may not be, it may not, it, that move by itself does not change the fundamentals of the company. Okay. So that is one of the reasons that it would be considered um, controversial. Anyway, let's go back to think or swim. Um, so I want to focus on the stocks that you may already know, the stocks that have a history of recovering, um, stocks with a, with a higher market, uh, uh, cap, uh, you know, so we've got, uh, let's look at the charts. Okay, this is McDonald Corporation doing at 50, 79. It had dropped to so let's uh, change time horizon. One day, one minute chart. Okay, five day, five minute. It had gone down to 175. This is trading at 180 right now. So let's um, let's go into trade McDonald. Let's create a order for 100 stocks. Limit order 18087, send this order. So this is, you see here. Really fast. Oh, let's do it again. So double click on the, uh, on the buy, uh, you know, ask. It, when you double click this, underneath it creates this order. Okay, so this is the uh, order editor. So you can edit your order here in this um, section. So right now, what I did was I double clicked the price there, uh, the ask price, and it created a buy order for 100. So this is by default. Double click the ask price. Yes, double click the ask price. So I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna go back right yeah. here and double click this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So the moment you double click this, 
it creates an automatic order. Right. Okay. And this, is, this area is called order edit uh, area. So in, in this editor, you see this is 100 stocks. You can change the price. And we're buying this today because it's down? Because it's down. Mm -hmm. Okay. And send. Right here, look up here. It says filled by, filled by 100 McDonald at 179. So if we go here uh, under well, monitor right. tab. Hold on. So you, you, it was 100 auto MCD. The price is now 180. Right. And you didn't make any other changes down here? No, I did not. I just went with the default order. So, so again, double click that. This is the default order. All of these things, I was okay with it. So I went ahead and confirmed and sent. Okay. Uh, then we go under monitor uh, activities and positions. So our position oh. is that we now have 200 stocks of McDonald's. Oh, you changed it to 200? Well, I ordered two. I ordered twice. Oh, okay, the second time I actually did. Yeah. So, uh, the first one I bought it at once. Uh, which one was the first one? This one was the first one at the bottom. 179.68. The next time I purchased it was 179.35. Okay. Now, you see here my available. Uh, limit is $28,000. Why do I have $28,000 when I only have two, you know, 200 of these stocks purchased for McDonald's? I should have $99,000 or $100,000 in here. Look in this area, account info. I've got $101,000 of net, net uh, liquidity. So why is it showing $28,000 here? You made some money somewhere. No, it's actually showing me less amount of money uh, for further purchase because you have any, any limit order that I have placed that takes uh -huh. away the money that reserves the money. Should uh -huh. remember we had set up this uh, limit order for Amazon. Mm -hmm. So the money has been reserved for that order. Should this price hit, there should be enough money to cover that purchase. So if I go ahead and I right click on this and I cancel this order. Now you see my available money has increased to $82,000. So anytime you put a limit order, remember that money will be held back. You will not have access to that money until you cancel it or the order has been fulfilled and you are ready to sell that. Okay. That's helpful for you not to um, overspend what you don't have. Right, right. Okay. Uh, now remember, um, some of these uh, stock traders, they offer uh, what's called um, uh, a, a type of credit. Uh, the word is escaping me right now, but I'll come back. So, so if you want to sell something that you don't own, they will go ahead, they will extend your credit, they'll buy it at the market price and sell it to fulfill your order. Uh, but of course, anytime you do that, they'll charge you additional fees. Uh, uh, for that. So you don't want to sell what you do not own. Can you review the options again? That was Yes. Good. So you go under trade uh -huh. and I'm going to clap, uh, collapse all of these. Um, and this is the third drop down options chain. So this, this shows if people have put up options uh, for purchase or sale. So this one. And what is options again? Options is a derivative 
uh, trading mechanism where you pay for the option to buy a stock in future at today's price or at a given price. So, to buy a stock what? To buy a stock in the future. So for example, look at this. Uh, this is for McDonald's. Yeah. You can buy the stock for $177 anytime before 17th April. So if this option is cheaper, what I could do is I can pay this person $5.10 and buy this option. So you're buying from people? You're buying options from people? Yes, from other sellers, yes. We're always buying from other sellers. And we're always selling to other sellers who are also on this platform. Okay. So, so we can buy this option and then buy this. And then after we have purchased it, we can sell it in the open market because this is cheaper, 177, because the price right now is 180. Well, how do you know what the difference is if you're doing the option and buying from a person versus the open so market? This is where the speculation comes into place. If you are expecting that the price will go up, you want to lock in that price by buying an option to purchase 100 stocks, for example, you know, up until whatever amount of time uh, the seller is, uh, is, is willing to give you. Why would I give up? If I bought stocks at a cheap price and you want to buy it from me and it's at a higher price now and I'm going to make money on it, why would I sell it? Right, because this was an older option. This person may have set this option and may not be monitoring it. So remember in, in placing an order, you can set up um, uh, those uh, uh, limit orders. Yes. So how many times does that happen that people forget that they had set up limit order. So that would remain in the system and would kick in when, the, when that price hits. And can you go over um, how to do that again, please? Yeah, so you go under trade. Yeah. And our options chain. Yeah. It shows you all different options that you, and you know, there are plenty of different options. Um, so this is good until April 24th. So you're looking at these, um, at when these people put their stuff out? That's what you're going through? Is that what we're looking at? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Say that again? What is, what is this that we're looking at? This is um, options that other people put out, this list yes. right here? Yes. So this is, these are options that other people have set uh, for anybody to purchase. So let's say, uh, so th this guy's asking for $23 to sell an option for hundred uh, for uh, for McDonald's stock for one hundred seventy five dollars. So let's buy this. Um, and it's currently at what today? Oh, one hundred and seventy nine dollars. Right. Okay. So we are. Sorry. Uh, so it's buy and then single. Buy, we are buying option to purchase 10 stocks. No, I know. You, what did you click on after buy? Because there's a, a, a sub list that came up. Was it single? You right clicked, you went on buy. Yeah. And then, I, just double -click, I just double click in this area. So I'm going to delete this. So this area is cleared. Okay. So I go in and I want to buy, right? So I double click this. Oh, and it came up at the bottom. So this is an option to purchase McDonald's for 175 until 15th of January. Hold on, mine is green, so I'm on the wrong one. I mean, mine is red, hold on. Um, 175. Oh, why is mine green? I mean, red. Oh, 
go to May 17th. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. Uh, I'm looking at actually January. I, I, I went down in this options list. So if you want an option that expires sooner, you look at the top of this list. Okay. And if you want extra time, you can go to the bottom of the list and see if you have those options available for future. No, it's still. I have a quick question. Sure. So, if you selling from other people and you buying for uh, the option of one seventy five, but the seller is asking for uh, twenty eight fifteen, so you have to pay a hundred seventy five plus what the seller is asking. No, you have to pay just what the seller is asking. So, for example. Uh, for this uh, option, I'm mm -hmm. paying $20.85 per stock today. Oh. Now, for me to place this order, the only time it would make sense is if in future I'm expecting this price to be more than $195 in future. You understand? That, yes. Because I have to make up this premium as well. Can you repeat that? So, so this is an option to purchase McDonald's yeah. at $175 all the way until 15th January, 2021. Mm -hmm. But I have to pay $20 right now, $21 almost, $20.85. I have to pay that money right now. Mm -hmm. So I have to expect that this price is gonna go up to at least $196 for me to even make a financial sense to, to pay this premium today. And that premium is based on, I mean, it's $20, uh, $21 per share. Per, per share, per yes. 25 shares. Yes. Okay. So, and, and this price will increase as the time increases. So, so this was 21st January. So let's go back. If I wanted it uh, until June 19th, you see the, if I want it only until June, then it's 1095 per stock today. You get it? Yes, but why does it, um, the current price is that, <coughs> what does the strike 175 represent? Because the current price is at 179. I thought we were getting this for like ten dollars per share. Why? How? Why is strike at 175? These are different providers who have set up. So, so if you were to choose, of course, this would make more sense. That at 175. But let's say if this, you know, these are it's currently at, it's selling at 179 with the $20, it's going to turn out to 196 with the $21. So I'm spending right. more than what it's worth right now per share. No, no, no. But, but see, you're not paying that 175 right now. You're buying an option to purchase it in the future for 179. But it's at oh, 175 right now. Why would I do that? 175. But it's at 175 right now. Why would I do that? Because in the future, you are expecting this price to, to go higher. If you're expecting it to be in 200 plus range mm -hmm. in the next six months, you are paying your premium right now to buy. So you're not buying the stock itself. You're just buying an option. Now, let's say the, this price, uh, this stock shoots up, goes to $250 a share. Now, it was worth spending this $20 today to have the option to purchase it for $175 in the future. But it's really not $175. It's one. 
right because you have to add this price so so there's a cost to buying that option so um now options trading is not for everyone but you need to know this is a very important concept you you do any uh trading class you will know you know you have to know the, this thing so there is this option so let's go back so and you said some people do this only and don't tend to the stock market right why because they are looking at a longer time horizon if they get it right they make a lot of money because they're not actually selling the stock the actual stock never changed hands so for example let's say this person who is selling this at this price is yeah. expecting that the price will go down for this stock. Mm -hmm. is expecting it goes down, okay. Right? So, but you're let's, buying, say, you're expecting let's say he, he sold this option for 175 today yeah. and the price tanked and it went to 150. Now, even though you have already paid this $20, you, you are not going to exercise this option because you have you can easily buy it from the open market for 150 right so you paid this 20 so the person who's selling it they made their money on the hopes that you are actually never going to exercise this because the price is going to go down on the other hand you are expecting the price to go up to 250 then that would make you a smart buyer because you paid $20 today, $21 today, and you locked in this price for the, for the next seven, eight months. Wait a minute, so nobody has to accept this offer? No, no, no. Whoever's, buying, whoever's selling it, they don't have to say, okay, I'm gonna sell it to you? No, they will sell it to you. As soon as you click it, it's bought? It's bought, that option is bought. Okay. So up until January 15, 2021, you can go back to that person and say that, okay, now I want these 10 stocks for which I had paid you the premium and they will have to sell it. So for example, so let's say- You're not buying it today. No, you're not buying that today. You're only buying an option to buy that stock in the future. Whenever you feel like it. Right, so they will lose money if let's say if the stock actually shoots up to 250. But you had already paid $21. They are bound to give you those 10 stocks for 175. And uh, let's say, I, I, so I have the option to hold on to it until January 15, 2021. Right. Do I have the option to say, I changed my mind, I don't want it anymore, even though nope. I already put Nope. You can't get your money back. <laughs> so I can only tell them when I want to buy it, yes. even though I already bought it? I, I, I have the option in my hand. Right. Now I'm going to say, when I say, I don't understand. I have the option. You said I already bought it, but I didn't already buy it. Okay. So let me give you another example. Um, you know, when you want to buy a house. Yes. And you give uh, earnest money. Right. As payment? you make an offer. The down payment. No, not a down payment, an earnest money. So let's say you give them $1,500. Then I'm making an offer. Here's earnest money. Here's uh, my good faith deposit yes. for $1,500 if you accept my offer. Mm -hmm. If the seller accepts your offer and then you change your mind that, no, I don't want to buy it anymore. You don't get your $1,500 back. You don't? No, you don't. Because you made an offer, they accepted it. But he just changed his mind you change your mind as a buyer. I change my mind. Okay, gotcha. Right? They accepted it. Okay. So you wanted to buy it at a specific price. Let's say you wanted to buy a house for $200,000. You gave $1,500 as, as an earnest money and they accepted it. They said, okay, we accept your offer. And now you walk away, you lose your money. So this is like that, uh, that you want to buy it for 175 a share. You're paying $21 today. Now, if the price of the share goes down, you're probably, you're not going to exercise this option. You'll, you'll let this money go, go to waste because you can buy it cheaper in the open market. 
But had the price gone up to 250, then it would make sense to go and say, remember, I paid you that uh, money for the option. I want to buy it now. So now they're going to have to go buy it at a higher price in the open market and give it to you because that was the contract. Let me make sure I understand. I have the option, I buy the option for the option to purchase, for the option to say I'm ready to buy it anywhere between now and, or give me my money anywhere, or give me the stocks anywhere between now and January 2021. Mm -hmm. And so I just have this option sitting here after I press confirm and send. Yes. And now at what point in time do I say, give me the stock? When the price goes up. Between now and January 15, when the price goes up, it, the, the stock shoots up. You want to exercise your option. At that point, you'll pay 175 per share. So if you have 10 shares, you'll pay 1,700 and you know, whatever amount at that time, they'll buy it from the open market. They'll give it to you. So they are betting that the price will be lower in the future. But I'm betting that it would be higher. No, no, no. They are betting that the price will be lower in the future. They made their money and in the future they can buy it, you know, cheaper and give it to you if you wanted it. Right. But, but the you, only are betting, time... you are betting that the price will go up. Oh, so when I tell them I'm ready to, to buy it, and I'm ready for you to give it to me. Exercise your option, yeah. But I'm ready to exercise my option on the stock market. That's what I'm confused about. You're saying I wouldn't exercise this option until the price of the stock is at 250, let's say. Yeah, because it would not make sense. But, yeah. but for them, they're hoping that I exercise the option when the price is lower that you never exercise this option, that you pay this money and never exercise this option because you can buy it cheaper from the open market. It would not make any financial sense for you to exercise that option. And even if you did, they'll be happy. You know, they'll go buy cheaper and give it to you at 175. Okay, and then the money is just washed. Is it, is it just me or is this concept a little, a, a lot, guys? I don't want to maximize the time, but I just want to understand if anybody else got it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send out a link uh, where this concept is further explained in writing as well, so so you can you can uh, absorb it a little better. Uh, but this is one new concept: options trading. Uh, you know, it is um, uh, it is an important um, concept. So if you look at today's options statistics right here there were 2175 calls for mcdonald's so these are people who are asking uh to for, for a for a future order at a specific price you can also you know just like you can do a limit order you can also put a call and you can say that you are willing to pay ten dollars premium if you give me at 170 instead of 175. Mm -hmm. So that would be a call option and put option would be when you want to sell an option. So there are 3,224 uh, put options. There are 2,186 call options. So by just looking at this, this tells me that there are more people who are betting that in future uh, the price may go down. You said call equals I want to buy it. Yes. And sell and equals, I mean, put equals I want to sell it. Yes. So a put option would be when I want to sell it. A call option would be when I want others, I'm soliciting, I'm making a call to others that, hey, can you, can you sell me an option for, for this price that I am setting? And how do you set that? You, you know, you double click, so I'm going to delete this previous I'm, order. I'm soliciting people to sell it at a, for a call. I'm soliciting people to sell it. Yes, that would be call. So, so when we clicked in this area and in, in the ask tab, that was a put up. Uh, that, that that was a call option, but we were responding to a put option. So let's click here. Um, Ten fifteen.
and now you're fine. Okay, go back again here. I have a question. Um, yes. The good till cancel versus uh, good till the end of the day. When you canceled your other order, like, how were you able to do that if you put it as a day? You mean the one for um, Chesapeake? No, the one that he did on uh, Robinhood. Um, one of the ones that he had in the Thinker Swim, like, or maybe yeah. on Robinhood. Let's, let's do like, it. Let's go on uh, here at underlying, underlying, underlying. I click here under ask, double click this. It is going to create a limit order of 100 stocks at the mm -hmm. price of 179.44, right? So I don't want to pay that price. I want to wait until the price comes down to let's say 170. You get it? So it's a limit order yeah. for 170 for 100 stocks for MCD. Mm -hmm. I go ahead, I confirm, I double check this and I send this. I'm just order. asking about the good till cancel versus the day. Oh, thing. good till cancel. Okay. So let's create another limit order. Double click here. The order editor comes in and I select good till cancel. And I, uh, and I say 170 and confirm and send. Now we go back to monitor and activities and positions. We see under working order, there are two orders here. So one is day order and the other one is good till cancel order. So mm -hmm. all you have to do is right click and say cancel. Yeah. And it will remove. Similarly, same thing for the day order, right click and cancel. So if you can cancel both of them, I'm just saying like, why, what's the difference between a day and the good till cancel, you can just cancel both of them. Good till cancel will stay active until that price is met, you know, maybe in the next six years or six months or six days. Oh, okay. So good till cancel will stay. So day order will, if that 170 was not hit uh, by the end of the stock market today, that's it. That order will be canceled automatically at the end of the day. Oh, that makes sense. Good till cancel will stay active tomorrow, day after, and whatever amount of time until that price is hit or you cancel it. Okay. And if you try to go and buy, like let's say you forgot about this good till cancel and you try and go buy the, the 100 stock, um, it's gonna give you a warning, right? To say that again. You already, if you now try to go and buy McDonald's, you already had the good till cancel, you forgot about it, <clears throat> and you try to go and buy some more, it's gonna give you an error saying you already have some. No, some no. no it will not give you an error, it will create another order as long as you have the money uh, available to, to uh, tie it up. So you, that's why this monitor tab is important. Under activities and positions, you look at your working order. So if you had one good till cancel order, and you place another good till cancel order that will all show up here. So let's let's go ahead. Let's go under trade, and I double click buy, and I say this is good till cancel for one seventy. Hold on, you went to trade, and then you went to what? Underlaying. Yes. And then I clicked on ask. Double clicked on that price. and it brought up the order editor. Yes. And I hit and, and I changed the price to 170. It was already a limit order. I changed uh, the validity to GTC, good till cancel. Mm -hmm. I confirm and send. This mm -hmm. order is sent. I go back again and I want to create a duplicate order or basically the same order. I double click the ask area. I go back. I do 170, I do good till cancel, and confirm and send, send. Go back to monitor tab. Both of those orders are showing up here. So there's no error, 
because I had the money available. Now you see, instead of $82,000, showing me $65,000 because the money is tied up for those two accounts. I can also right click on one of these orders and create a duplicate order or create an opposite order with a single click. Opposite means you're gonna sell it now? Yeah, so you could do that. So, so it makes it easier, you don't have to, um, you don't have to input uh, these things over and over again. So let's, let's do a duplicate order. So once I click that, it brought in everything right here. All I have to do is hit confirm, send confirm, go back to monitor, and the third order shows up here as well. Okay, I don't wanna create a reverse order right now because I already have 200 stocks from McDonald's. Right, if I create a, a reverse opposite order for 170, of course it's gonna sell it right away uh, at the current market price. But let's do it anyway. So let's create an opposite order. So this is an order to sell 100 stocks of McDonald's at 170. Good till cancel. Now the price is 179. So if, let's say I'm making a mistake. The price is 179. I'm selling at 170. Let's see how much time. It's it is a limit order. Remember? Um, you change it to limit, limit order. order. Oh, it is good till cancel. How long do you think it'll take before it sells? So we and immediately sold, but it sold it at 178, whatever, even though I said 170, right? I said 170, but it sold it at 179, 178.56, because that was the best price between 170 and 178. So whatever is the best price in the market, it'll sell it at that. Okay, so it's already 10.22. Um, we'll, we'll catch up tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll, we'll talk about a few more advanced concepts. Uh, but here's the thing. Um, today is a good day to buy as the market is low. Uh, I would like you to make some trades. The options trades, it's up to you. If you wanna exercise that, uh, you're welcome to, to give it a try uh, within your uh, simulated account. Uh, but, but what I'm asking you to make sure that you buy and sell you know, something today, or at least buy today in the hopes that tomorrow or day after you can sell them uh, and make some money uh, on this account. Okay, so last week I used it only once and I made 700, well, that day I had made $800. Today I'm, I've lost some money because I paid 179 for 100 stocks and I sold it for 178. So I made some loss today, but I had made upward of $800 last week when I was showing you, showing this around to you. Um, so I would like you to show me next week that you have made some money. So even though we'll be talking about a few more concepts, the, the basic concept remains the same. Trading of the stocks. When I looked at um, uh, Bloomberg News a few weeks ago, they were saying since this uh, pandemic hit, I don't know if you agree, but Monday start off a little high, then Tuesdays drop. And then there's, there's been a, a pattern of the days of the week, how things go. Have you seen that? Yeah, of course, of course. You know, So those types of things will happen and it does not have to do anything with, just with, uh, with the virus issue. You know, these swings happen all the time. Um, you know, even when market is doing very well, uh, these these swings continue to happen, but of course, you know the virus situation complicates things because uh, there are a lot of news coming out that affect the 
the market mood. Do you feel like politicians put stuff out there, <coughs> um, whether it's real news, fake news, whatever, um, so that the market could go up and down? Of course. I mean, just last week, uh, Trump said that he has spoken with the Saudis and uh, the Russians about the oil price and that they have uh, about the cutting the production and they have decided to cut the production. The price was at about $20 a barrel that day. And as soon as that announcement came in, it went up to $29 a barrel. Was it true or was it not true? Well, it was true, but it was meaningless because they did meet, they did cut production, but the production cuts are not as, uh, as deep as uh, they should have been considering that the demand is so low. So, so that, uh, that production cut is too little too late. The, the storage facilities are filling up. There is no more space to store that oil that is being produced every day. So, and, and we are seeing that even though technically he didn't lie, but the market overreacted to his announcement. Okay, now I understand. Yeah. Because, and you're saying the market over, overreacted because he was, he was thinking that the price was gonna go down for the oil instead of it, and it went up? Is that why you're saying that? No, no, no. He said the, that the Russians and Saudis have agreed for production cuts. So if the production is reduced, it'll reduce the supply and that should raise the price. So he was hoping for the price to go up, which it did. It did. But those production cuts that he talked about are too little too late. That was an overreaction from the market because at that time they didn't know exactly how much cuts there would be. So on Thursday, they had the meeting, OPEC plus meeting. That meeting went on, I think until Sunday. On Sunday, Sunday, they all agreed uh, to reduce by, I think, 9 million or something. You know, it, it's a historic cut uh, in production, but, but it is not accounting for the overall reduction in demand. So it's not equal to that. So, so there's so, still... So, it's, so something I understand a little bit more is when he announced this... Um, McClorochlin or whatever. Yeah. Do you think that sometimes uh, he might put something out there so that the um, so that the price of this drug uh, on the stock market could go up, but really um, the drug is not even that available. Mm -hmm. So you think that that could have happened? Of course. So this is where the, the so job of- And then it goes back down. Right, right, right. So this is, this is where the job of the analysts come into play, that you as a trader should be able to analyze um, facts versus fiction. Uh, you know, what's real and what's not real, what's meaningful and what's meaningless. Uh, if, you can, if you can understand that, if the price is going up without any solid basis, that would be time for you to sell. And once the market settles, once everybody realizes that, that there was no truth, then you start to buy. Like I'm buying oil today, right? I, I sold my oil stock when he made the news uh, and the price went up. I got out of oil. So that is an important thing to realize when to sell and, um, and when to buy. That makes a world of difference. Even the even the um, possibility of them opening the um, having plans to open up the market to me it sends a, a bit of false hope because nobody knows exactly when the market is gonna. I mean, when the quarantine or whatever you want to call it is gonna let up. But I think it sends from based on what I've seen so far. Whenever those announcements are made, people are betting on yes, we're gonna get out of this, and they're putting their money in the stock markets prices go up and then 
the reality hits later in the week that, mm, yeah, it's probably not going to happen when we think it's going to happen. And then Right. So two things happen there. Day traders, they still make their money. They make their money on the upswing. Mm. Right? And they're out of the out of the business by the end of the day. So they have made their money. The problem comes in when swing traders or traders who have retirement accounts, they put in their money during that upswing. And now when the prices start to settle, they see losses, huge losses on their portfolios. So day traders can react to those things very quickly because they're plugged in, they're constantly looking at the news. So you see here in the live news column, and this is just one source. You know, this is just one source of uh, news. There are plenty of other news. Um, if you happen to know where the news is coming in, which actually ch makes changes to a single company stocks, you know, you make your decisions accordingly. Okay. I have a quick question before you go. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. Um, I did some, um, I, bo I bought some uh, shares and uh -huh. the, um, and the app, but now I want to understand it where it says, uh, where position statement, the mm -hmm. PL day and PL, PL open. What does it mean when it's under uh, parentheses? Is that winning? Uh, print, uh, show me where this is. Uh, you're looking at monitor Act tab? Activity and positions, and yeah. then um, the These position parentheses. statement. You're looking at this parentheses, right? Yeah, on, on the on the bottom where you have the Kesey, Kesey IA and McDonald's and Neil, I have a couple of them, but are the, uh, let me see. Yeah, so whenever there's a, uh, there's a parenthesis that shows uh, a negative price, you know. So, for example, PL day profit loss in today. Oh, that's profit. So there was a loss of hundred and seventy one dollars because we purchased at one seventy nine. Okay. Right now, McDonald's is trading at one seventy eight. Okay. And because we had two hundred stocks, two hundred stocks is, you know, that's going to make a. Well, actually, we only have 100 stocks at this time because we sold 100. Uh, so, so a dollar difference on 100 stocks would make a difference of $100. Got you. So, so what should you, what should you do in, in this type of situation? Now, well, now we talk about strategy. What should you do? You buy a stock and the price goes down. What should you do? Wait for it to go back up. Or is a better strategy. If this company is a solid company, you think McDonald's is a solid company? Yes. Yes. You know, as solid as it can get, right? Yes. The chances are that this will swing back. So if it has gone down, I would actually go and buy more. Yes. You get it? Yes. yes. So the share will minimize the price. Per share price would be minimized. Yes. Um, that's why you do it. So you're not getting rid of the ones you spent higher money on. Right, you pile money on. You keep keep going down as long as you have hopes that this company is going to recover, that this company has a history of recovery. So you keep going down until uh, you know uh, until you see that it has recovered. So, for example, what's happening with Bitcoin? Okay, let's see. <clears throat> this Bitcoin. Uh, you see, my average cost is six thousand seven hundred fifteen. It is trading at six seven seventy two. So, just today, well, today I had a loss, but overall, and this is calculating only based on the last few hours. Uh, <clears throat> today, uh, I'm in total overall. I have made thirty dollars on this. But $30 on an investment of $3,600, that's not a huge lot of money. But if I, if I was expecting that this will come back up, which it has the habit of recovering. So for example, you see it goes down, then it goes up, it goes down, but then it recovers, right? So, uh, so it, this stock has that 
tendency. I mean, Bitcoin is not a stock. Um, so at this point, I would, I just want to hold, but if it had gone down to, let's say $6,600, I would definitely put in another $500. So, so right now I'm just going to hold out because because it is already trading at higher than my average cost. It does not make any sense for me to pile on more unless I was increasing my, um, uh, my uh, uh, involvement or, or my percentage of portfolio diversity into Bitcoin a little bit more. I don't wanna do that right now, but if it hit $6,600, and my average cost was 67, I would sure go ahead buy more to reduce my average cost. All right, thank you. Okay, well, guys take care. I will send out a link um, uh, to, to some of the you know, underlying concepts behind options, but I want you to treat options and regular trading as two different concepts, even though they are related, these are two different, if you, if you don't want to do options, you don't have to do it, but you, you should just know about it. Personally, I don't do options, I just do stocks uh, because options adds another uh, layer of complexity on top of, uh, of the complexity that comes with uh, dealing in trades. So that's not for, for the beginners. Is yeah. your full-time job a day trader? No, 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 no. This is all hobby. This is just a hobby. Um, I have a, I have a PhD in computer science. Um, so I'm basically a, a software, um, designer. You just have a little time on your hand right now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and I wanted to share that with, uh, with basically high schoolers and, uh, college students. Appreciate you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We'll meet up again tomorrow. Oh, uh, videos. Yes, yes. I will figure that out and I will upload those and send send out that link to the okay. okay. Take care guys. Okay. Good seeing you. Thank you. Bye bye. You're welcome. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.